Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of the UK Connection alongside my comrades in arms, as always, Mr. Simon Bray from Lancashire and Stephen Reed from Perth, Scotland. Good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and my friends, how are you today? Fantastic. Excellent. Looking forward to discussing a legendary band. That's right. Today is all about ACDC. Favorite and least favorite albums and a ginger wild card that is happening today. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get started talking about ACDC, it's beverage time. So, Simon, what's you drinking today? Really good question, that is. Um, I appear to be drinking a Smash IPA from the Garden Brewery, um, which I think is in Croatia. It's a collaboration with the White Tank Brewery, which is in Ireland. And I pulled it out because it's got some lovely little bunnies on the gun. Oh, look at that. Bunnies. That's cool. Yeah, That's nice. nice. Hopefully it's not going to end up in a water ship diamond situation. Hopefully. Hopefully. It's going to be absolutely um, hair-raising. But it's a smash IPA, and I'll be talking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be smashing. Not off, mate. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, yes, I'm going to pour it right now and get back to you soon. So as you're pouring, yes, I'm going to bore you all to death. I was at Abernight a few weeks ago. You've heard all that story. So, yeah, basically, I'm now on a tinkle top. Tinkle Top Pale Ale is what I'm at. Here we go. Tinkle Top. Tinkle Top. Very manly Thank name you. there for a brewery. Here we go. And for a pale oh, ale. Oh, but it looks great. So, all right. So they can get not, by with not, the Tinkle Top. Yeah. And not quite so pale. No, not really. But I tell you what. It's, it's got a little, it's it's got a little tinkle great. on top. It does look really good. Yeah. Nice. This amber color. Yeah. Oh, it's got a real body. I really like this. It's lovely stuff. Really nice. nice. Excellent brewery. Well, if you all remember last week, I was talking about beers from Vermont, right? So uh, I've got another one for you here today. This is from the uh, Von Trapp Brewing Company, a Bohemian-style Pilsner lager. Okay. Mm. In a can. Yes, in a can again. A little of Austria, a lot of Vermont. 12 fluid ounces, a full 12 fluid ounces, unlike the one I was drinking a few weeks ago. And this is, uh, what in the world is this? 5.4% alcohol by volume. So, yeah, I have had this before. This is quite good. Great summertime beer. Oh, hear that? And I'm going to be pouring it in my Brooklyn Pen and Ale 55 glass, which I like quite a bit. There we go. I've been on a roll the last couple of weeks with my pours, gentlemen, have I not? Yeah. Uh, remember about a month ago, I had that, that big head pour? That has not happened since, right? I, I don't remember that, Peter, only because I've blocked it out of my mind. As you should. Look at that. Perfect. Yeah, nice. Look at that. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right. Simon's going to kick us off with his uh, two favorite ACDC albums. The uh, born in Scotland, grown up in Australia bands, right? It's, most people don't. I'm sure there are people out there who don't know that. They actually, the Young Brothers were born in Scotland, as was Bon Scott, correct? Bon Scott was born in a place called Kerry Muir, which is about 15, 20 miles from here. Wow. Just up the road. They have a thing called Bonfest once a year. So they, they used to have ACDC tribute bands and various things, but it's turned into a little festival. Why not? Sure bon, there's a statue of him there. I'm very good at this too. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so obviously you think I'm going to do that first. Um, and, I, and I probably am. I, yet I always try and work out where did I come in with this band? I want, and, do you know what? I, 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 I'm not 100% confident where I came in with ACDC. Mm. I genuinely don't listen to them that often. And not often. But I think, you know, I'm going to listen to ACDC at this point. And then I, I looked at this metric fuck ton of ACDC albums I've got over here. <laughs> and it turns out I really like ACDC. But I couldn't tell you the last time I actually pulled one out and listened to them. Which is why the last few weeks have been so excellent. Dudes. Yeah. And it's all... Dudes. Yeah. It's also why I've currently got three 
um, ACDC album sat in front of me that I cannot decide. Oh, Jeopardy. I know. Oh, it's just such hard work. But I'm going to go. He's going to pull a you know what today. I'm not. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to put one to. I'm going to put one to one side, and then talk about the others. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to talk about all three of them, even though I really want to talk about all three of them. And I'm going to put them to one side. And I now don't know if that's the right answer. It's like watching a magician at work there, Simon. You'll never know what I was going to talk about. Not a clue. But I am initially going to talk about the happy, happy joy that is Dirty Deeds. Done Dirt Cheap. Dirty Deeds. Done Dirt Cheap. And I think we know where I'm going with this one. Dirty Deeds and the Done Dirt Cheap. Etc. What a fantastic record. Oh, just such a top no top nice 1970s uh, uh, album. It really is. It's just just fun. It's a fun record. Um, it's got the title track. Um, love at first feel. I mean, how many songs can one band have about Shaggy? Turns out shitloads is the answer. To- yes, Stephen. Uh, no, I'm just thinking they also really, really like the subject of song number three. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do. And a lot of song about, songs about... Yeah. Lots of songs about Jack, whoever he is. Yeah. And Little Jack, Tiny Jack, Jack, Jack in, yeah, Jack in a Box, Jack in everywhere. They, like, they like balls. Yes, they do, don't they? Big balls, little yeah. balls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they do. But um, it's, just, it's just a really, really fun, succinct record. And early, early ACDC, um, when they were, quite frankly, co-owing it up, let's be honest, they could boogie with the best of them. Mm-hmm. Really, really could. Um, problem child. Oh, yeah, really? Um, just, thank you. Thank you for that big thumbs up. It's almost like I created it myself. Ain't no fun waiting around to be a millionaire. I was listening to that today. It turns out it's quite a lot of fun waiting around not to be a millionaire. <laughs> Squealer, what's that about? I just, just, just can't quite put my finger on. I get it. Uh, what the, what that might be all around. But right on. Oh. Oh. Yeah, love it so much. Really, really. Just just love it. And he's so, so kind of like out, out of kilter with it. Um, I like all eras of ACDC, but... Um, this one was not ever, ever going over there like that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Whatever that is. Um, yeah. Um, um, do you know what? I think it's a, um, they're, they're a band where the producer's really important. Mm-hmm. Very true. And yet, to me, at times, they don't really sound that produced, if that makes sense. They, sound like they just actually could be sitting there play, playing. And, and the, the drums always sound great. And do you know what they sound like? That's right, kid. Drums. <laughs> At the risk of going into grumpy old man. I mean, just so many modern records, probably because they don't have actual humans on, don't sound like they've got drums on. ACDC always, always, always sound like they've got an actual drum replacement. And I like that. I do, and I like it. I like the interplay of the guitars on every album. I like the fact that um, the guitar might be over here on one one at the start of a song, and might move over there, and other other times. I, just, I, but it's just quite simple, you know. I always use ACDC as a um, when I'm teaching the kids. You know, human beings like what they like. Yeah, you know, and some bands change, but ACDC they're, they're never picking up a harpsichord. And putting it on, you know, that theremin staying resolutely locked in the cl- cupboard, isn't it? Don't you remember the concept album, Simon? <laughs> Wizards, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, space, space. Oh, no, um, it's just fa- fantastic. Early, early uh, period ACDC that if uh, you never listen to it, go seek it out. You know, you want to. You know you want to. Um, I'm not going to pick Back in Black, although I do have this, for a long period, I did have this thing where, because I love Back in Black, I love it with all my heart and soul, but I had this period where when I'm queuing up at an airport, I've got, I had to listen to Back in Black, like you do, while I'm waiting to put the luggage on. It ha- 
for quite a period. When I got in that queue, whatever I was listening to, I had to, I had to jog on, back in, back, I had to come on. <laughs> so that's enough about my, uh, my problems, but I don't do that anyway. No. Um, I've decided to keep, and, you know, at the risk of being repetitive, it's favourite, not best. Mm -hmm. I've decided to keep. Because I think there was a there've been a, there's been there's actually been quite long periods where ACDC haven't been that brilliantly wonderful, or as we like to call it, much of the last you know twenty odd thirty years, um, yeah. But I just really like the Razor's Edge. Yeah, it starts off with Thunderstruck, which is like always a good thing. Always a good thing. I can even tolerate Miss, Mistress for Christmas, which I know some people can't. Um, it, they, it, this is the point where clearly Bruce Fairburn, who was in producing more of this, I said, fellas, you're a stadium rock act. Make a record that sounds like a stadium rock act. And they came up with you know, Thunderstruck. And Jesus Christ, Skinner would come on to that. Yeah. And they don't come on until that's finished. <laughs> Because you wouldn't, would you? You know, you, you just wouldn't. Um, it's just a big, big record in, uh, in the sense that whilst Back in Black was a mammoth record in terms of its sales, this actually, it's, they thought, this is the one thing, we can play this shit in a venue that's the size of something that's quite big. Yeah. That was their big return. Yeah. To that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Money talks. Oh, you know it. You know that song makes sense. You know it. You know it. But you got you by the oh balls. Didn't see that coming. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's just it's just thoroughly enjoyable. Enjoy in a way that some of their other um, output at the time was hmm, hmm, more filler than killer, shall we say? <laughs> but yeah. the kill, the killer was there, but. The fellow was most certainly there. Um, um, this is the one of last few weeks that I've returned to a lot. But I'll, I'll just that one. Now, Simon, you know, Stephen has been eyeing those hype stickers on those little digipacks there. Yeah, old oh, more over here. Oh, wait, he's. he's... <laughs> there must have been some that I took. Oh, yeah. it, I've, I've done. I've done with the good shit. You've done with the good shit. Well, when it comes to doing these shows, I have found that I tend to veer off the path. My favourites, and as Peter will attest with the Kiss show, my least favourites don't necessarily align with everybody else's. The Kiss show especially, favourite and least favourite when I think about it with, with Peter. I don't think that I could be more straight down the line with my two choices for ACDC. That this, to me... And I, do, I just think that this is a straight line down the line as you get. Highway of Hell, okay, album number six, 1979. Everything about this is just great. Everything. I mean, the album art is iconic. It says a lot, this album art, doesn't it? I do like to look at album covers and things. I think, oh, that's a great illustration. It's really cool. It has that kind of threat that ACDC always had about them. There's, you know, I think it's just holding his devil's tail. Is he, isn't he? Is he real? Is he a, is he a demon of some sort? Because he's horns. And oh, look, there's other band members too. Hi! Are we allowed in? Is it our turn? Hello! No, no, no. It's about Bon and Angus and Malcolm. Hello, it's our band. It's our band. And you get to hit things too. You know, but they get a little bit, a little bit of billing on the back. But I mean, this is just great. It's absolutely fantastic. This, to me, personally, there are maybe <clears throat> better songs from the Bond era on other albums. There are some great on Powerage, some great stuff on Dirty Deeds. High Voltage has got real high points on it too, no pun intended. But from start to finish here, I just think that this is an iconic album. I really do. It just seems to take that rabble-rousing danger that early ECDC is all about. Simon is absolutely hitting the nail on the head. It really was like listening to a produced band playing at a bar. It's Ballroom Boogie, it's what the Australians were famous for. I mean, it's like Rose Tattoo with a little bit of kind of something a little bit more finesse and, and refined about it in, in that kind of sense. But this just takes it up a little notch, in my humble opinion, 
all the early stuff is great. It really is. But Highway to Hell, it's one of those songs that it has transcended rock music. You hear it everywhere. People know it. I mean, if you say ACDC and you say Highway to Hell, people know it. They can sing along with it. They have no idea about rock music or who these guys are or any of that kind of stuff. But everything here, Girls Got Rhythm, Walk All Over You, Touch Too Much. Oh, wow. And even the kind of less celebrated stuff like Beating Around the Bush. I mean, what's that all about? It's They're great too. Do you know, Shot Down in Flames, Shut Down in Flames. There's so much pent up aggression on this album. Get it hot. There's an undersung song on this catalog. It's such a good song. The groove on that, the, the beat on that. Oh, I mean, these guys might be going, hello, back here, but the key to what's going on in the music. This is how to make an album sound great without really doing all that much. And I don't mean that disparagingly. There are so many bands that add the bells and the whistles. This is a band that's dum, 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 dum. not quite so much at this stage to be fair, but it's about the brevity. Every drum break matters. Every little guitar break matters. Every little inflection of vocals matters. This is just brilliant. Night Prowler. Oh, if you want blood, you got it. Everything here is so good. So good. Absolutely fantastic. Iconic stuff. And the only more iconic album in the catalogue, I mean, it's got to be that, hasn't it? It's got to be Back in Black. This shouldn't work. It shouldn't work, should it, really? I mean, what the band had been through, Bon has passed. We've got Brian Johnson in, who on paper makes no sense in this band whatsoever. Wow. <sighs> Boom. This is just ridiculously good. Yes, Mutt helps on the production. Suddenly we're a bit slicker. Suddenly we're just moving with the times. This is just perfect for 1980, isn't it? It is just so good. I mean, Hell's Bells, that's how it opened an album, isn't it? You expect an opener to go, yeah, and it doesn't. But it's got such kind of heft about it. You know, there's a majesty about it. Shoot to thrill, what do you do for money, honey? How do you get your kicks? It's so good. I mean, it's, everything about this is memorable. Everything, absolutely everything. Given the dog, it's just fantastic. And I mean, then you start to say to go back in black. I mean, it just gets better. It makes no sense. You shoot me all night long, amazing. Rock and roll, like noise pollution. Well, you got that damn right. And this is just so good. And, I, and this is not me playing it safe. I really did listen to the whole catalogue again and thought, should I try and work out the box here a little or whatever? But no, Simon is very militant about it. You choose the favourites. These are my favourites, and they have been for, for a very, very long time. And it's no hyperbole to suggest that this is a real cornerstone of the rock and metal world. It would be a very different place without this album. It, it really would. Uh, and I don't say that lightly. You know, we pick up a lot of bands here because we love a lot of bands here. This, this, this album is, is mightily important, mightily important. It shaped the music scene, the heavy music scene at the time, realistically, and it did a career but good. Some of it not so good. More on that later. So that's my favourite too. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, no, sorry at all. I, you, know, I, you, you said it all perfectly. I mean, it is our favourites, right? And, and I, I love where you were going with this because this set the stage for the entire 80s. Yep. It, I mean, I bought this the week it came out in 1980 as a 14 year old kid and everybody I knew listened to this, everybody I knew owned it. And uh, yeah, I agree with you. You know, all of a sudden, you know, Mutt Lang's production getting a little slicker, but God damn, is there a better guitar tone on any album in the eighties? I mean, the guitars are huge on this album. The songs are memorable. This too. I mean, it's, I, I you know, I go back and forth between which is my number one of these. I, I don't know if it really matters, but you know, there's just, I mean, touch too much is just terrific shot down in flames. Girls got rhythm, uh, man, shoot the thrill. I will say I never, ever need to hear you shook me all night long ever again, but the rest of this album completely rules to me. They have other albums that are up there. I mean, I feel bad because there's albums like, uh, you know, Powerage and Let There Be Rock and a few others that I feel really, really strongly about, but 
in the end, for me, it it's, has always been about these two, always. So with that, back to Simon for the least favorites. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's that time to delve into the deck of cheats. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know, there, there's a there is a period, like I said, um, where they, you know, the singles were great, and the rest of the albums were yeah, not terrible, but just, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but, I, you know, because they're heritage acts, I just really want to talk about what heritage acts do. Yes, yes. Eugene SEDC is an example. So, um, yeah, the soundtrack to Who Made Who. Hmm. Yeah. And then they did the, the soundtrack to Iron Man 12, whichever one it was. Two? Iron Man 2, yeah. Here's my knowledge of... Um, the Iron Man slash Marvel universe. Now, the thing with Heritage Acts are, is that clearly the music industry is completely fucked up, haven't they? <laughs> and they've got to keep milking the same shit over and over again. And the, it's not ACDC's fault um, that this is happening. And but they were in on the ground floor, you know. Admittedly, didn't Stephen King say, "Please, please, can we have your songs? Please, please, please." That sort of thing. But just, just this kind of thing annoys me. You know, the constant repackaging of stuff, just on the off chance, it's like there's a, a different cowbell at the end of the song, and you and so dickheads like us were going by it. They were like, "What is this?" Yeah. There's, yeah. there's a there's a couple of bespoke instrumentals on there. So you know, I, 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 I've, I've listened. I said it all. <laughs> I've listened to Flick on the Switch, Find the Wall, Block video recently, and they're all right. Yeah, and that in itself is uh, fair, uh, damning me faint praise, isn't it? Um, but you know, just keep bringing the same the albums out. You know, reissue that again. You know, that'd be that'd be fantastic. But just, just, they just. It annoys me, you know, make new stuff, you know, make more new stuff, whatever it is, but it's just, just stop, stop with the constant repackaging of the same shit. And that's not ACDC, it's everybody. Because I will buy it and Mrs. Simon won't be happy. <laughs> there is the key right there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Did you really need that, Simon? Well, yeah. Um, so, um, I didn't have it in me to slaughter any specific albums, but it would have been the ones I've just mentioned. But and I'm not entirely sure if that's not where I came in, you know. And then I realised that actually there are albums of other songs that are that good. But yeah. So are you cheating and only choosing one? Yeah. <laughs> He's pulling a Simon. I, 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 men I mentioned the others that I... I don't feel, don't feel hatred for it, but don't feel, don't feel the love that I do, do for that, for that, for the others. That, and, you know, definitely not for those about to rock, which definitely hasn't been seen anywhere tonight. I just, th there's a long period, that's the one, until something else that's going to be more of later. The, thank you, thank you, thank How you. great of a live shot is that, right? Yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it great? Yeah. There was a long period where I I, I found found them a little bit meh. I agree. Yeah, and then I think they came back. But more of that later. There you go. Right. So I haven't cheated because I'm not Simon. No, you're a good boy. Who's a good boy? I, I, I put myself through the mill for this, Simon. I do. Absolutely. Like you always do, Steve. You never cheat. What the pain I put myself through for the show. And the pain I put you lot through for this show. Um, I have a complicated relationship with this band. And you've really touched on it, Simon, because when I was a young metalhead at school in Scotland, where there were like maybe two of us in about 300, 
you know, because there was no scene here, Peter. You talk about all your friends listening to Back in Black. My friends were not listening to Back in Black because they were like, we know who ACDC are, but we don't listen to that kind of music. But they knew who ACDC were. There were two bands who my friends knew. They were Iron Maiden and they were ACDC. And yeah, there was Quo and various things, but Quo felt less relevant by this stage, if that, if that makes any sense. I love them dearly. Don't complain in the comments. Thank you. But from there, realistically, things have really waned off for me. I found the least favourites really very difficult. And that's because I could really pretty much, this along with a Quo album, this is the first record, and it's still the same copy as you can tell from just how battered it is. This is the first record I bought with my own money. Second hand at the time, so I'd seen action by that stage. And already, yeah, okay, there's a nice big image in the front of this, and there's not, there's not on this. But you look at the back and you think, well, we're just trying to do the same thing all over again. That's what we're trying to do. I think this is a really good effort at trying to do the same thing all over again. I like this album a lot. It wouldn't have quite done this for me, but I do really like it. I really like it. From there on in, with one or two exceptions, and Simon has mentioned one as one of his favourites, I could just about shut my eyes and put a pin in a bit of paper that's got the ACDC albums on it to choose a least favourite. I have struggled with ACDC really for decades now. After Who Made Who, which I bought when, brand new when it came out, I really started to struggle with this. And Simon again has hit the nail on the head because ACDC had what I have now become known after, after we did the status quo show as having quo syndrome. Man oh man, they can pick a single. They can pick a single. This band know what the best songs on the album are. And that worries me. Because when you know what the best songs on the album are, you can pick them relentlessly. You never get it wrong. What does that say about the rest of the album? Well, it tells you that you've got albums like this. I don't really like, I don't hate anything in the ACDC catalogue. If you go back and watch the Quo show, where we did our least favourites, a couple I really don't like. And I really don't like them. Most of them I really quite do. There's nothing in the ACDC catalogue that, catalog that I don't like. I'd even go as far as to say that there are very few songs that I don't like. But the problem with things like Blow Up Your Video is that they became inoffensive. Mm. This band, who were absolute rabble-rousers, they were crazy. Do you know, they were fighting in bars, and that was the impression that the music gave you. They were unpredictable. What were they going to do next? These crazy guys, this guy in the uniform. This is becoming a bit of a thing. You like, you can feel it. And they've continued it on almost to the end. How many? Oh. You open the album with Heat Seeker. I really like that song. Heat Seeker's excellent. Then you follow up with that's the way I want to rock and roll. Well, actually, yes, it is. That is the way that I want to rock and roll. This is really, really good. And they've put the best two songs right up front and none of the rest of matters. There's none of the rest of this really matters. There's nothing bad on it. There's nothing else that's particularly good on it. So by virtue, really, of just having a really poor track order, if, you, if they'd even split the singles between sides, I could be that's okay. But once I've heard the first two songs on this album, I can hardly go, right, okay, what will we listen to now? And I am famed for listening to albums from start to finish. I don't do the skip and oh, I just don't do it. Yeah. And that makes me not play that album. Because <clears throat> I know that once I've heard the first two songs, I'm kind of going to go. Yeah. Now, in terms of best and worst, which we're not doing, okay, I would argue that this maybe should be in here somewhere. Okay. But this was the album that came out when we were really into ACDC. So I spent months and months and months. I can play every beat on this album. I can probably sing you every word on this album because we know from back to front, it's not a favorite because time has not treated it particularly well. There are a few good songs on here. There are a few not so good songs on here. I'm always fast at, I like to talk about album covers. Here we go, you've got, you've got the fly on the wall or flow on the wall as it actually says on the front. This album is actually called Flow on the Wall. And you've got this cheeky chappy here, bro. He's a peeping Tom or whatever he's doing. What's he doing? What can he see through the wall? Well, I don't know because the fly's arse is on the back, but he's nowhere to be seen. That makes zero sense. 
I do get that you need these shots of the band and all that sort of stuff, but as concepts go, I really like this album, but because it's a favourite, not because I think it's a great album. So I'm left going to flick of the switch. I just don't like very much about this. It's a, it's this is to me back in black take three. That's what this album is. So when you've done for those about to rock, we salute you. And you think actually, you know that that actually still works. I can still go with that. It's got the same vibe. It's got the same sound as back in black. Can it really just it doesn't? It's not doing anything other than what you expect. But doing it again, no, don't don't do it again. Just just don't do that. I really like the album. This one's really cool. Don't do it again though. Just don't do it again. I mean, what's great on here? Flick of the Switch is quite good. Nervous Shakedown, the single, again, is quite good. Guns for Hire is quite good. Idle in Belgium. It's just, we're kind of at that stage now where I'm beginning to struggle. And that's, that's a theme that continued on for a long time with me and ACDC, and I have them all sitting here, and I bought them all when they came out, because I always lived in the hope that they would do something a little different. Not massively, I do get it. ACDC have a thing, they have a sound, and you can't just suddenly turn into, I don't know, you can't come out with a sticks album if you're ACDC, you just can't, I mean, they're not, right, you can't do it, right, I get it. And people love them because of who they are. And I would imagine, I may get quite a lot of hate in the comments for this, but people who love this band, love this band. And if you take offense of what I'm saying, well, there you go, That this is how I feel about ACDC. I love them too, but it's, been a little bit of a struggle for me along the way. So that is my two least favourites. Yeah, I mean, uh, I agree with a lot of what you said. I think we all love ACDC, but I think we can all agree they don't have a ton of great albums, right? They have a lot of good albums. Yep. yep. Um, and I was kind of hoping that Stephen and I would have been on point on both. We're almost there because we got half of this one <laughs> in sync as well. So one of my least favourite is this one, Blow Up Your Video. And I agree with you 100%. Heat Seeker's great. Yeah. That's the way I want to rock and roll. That's pretty good. The rest of it. You know what? My issue with a lot of these latter period ACDC albums is one word. I don't even know if it's a real word. M-E-H. Meh. It's, it's okay. Yeah. Right? It's ACDC. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's okay. That's why it's so difficult to pick one. It's real. Absolutely. 100%, Simon. 100%. Yep. There's nothing on this that is terrible. Mm -hmm. There's nothing on this that makes me want to reach for this stuff. And, and Simon said something early on that really hit with me. Uh, we all proclaim to love ACDC, and we do. I do. I, I like, oh, we always like this band. I don't listen to them all that much. I very rarely listen to ACDC. And I don't know whether that's I listened to too much of them early on, but I don't even think I did that much back then either. I think it's a band that we all grew up with, however old you are. We all like them. We all have all their albums. I just, I almost never feel the need to listen to them. I don't know why. When I do, I enjoy it, but I'm like, hmm, I'm going to the gym today. What should I listen to? Hmm, ACDC. No, I never do that. I never do that. Um, so I don't know. So this album to me is like, it's okay. It's nothing special. And the other one I picked is uh, Stiff Upper Lip. Again. So that, that's, that, that was the next one down for me. There you go. <laughs> I struggle with which two to pick because yeah. I had like four of them, five of yeah. them. And I'm like, yeah, I could pick any of these. Price. I could pick any of these. Again, a lot of songs on here. You know, House of Jazz, the title track is okay. There are times where on some of these albums that, were, that are in the bottom half of the catalog, I look through the track list. And I'm like, I couldn't even fucking tell you how this song goes. But then when I listen to it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that one. Well, what does that tell you? It's not memorable. It's not like, you know, some of the other albums we just talked about where we're like, yeah, we know every song. It's like, yes. Um, and I will say, I just want to make a comment on it because uh, when, because again, I, I bought these when they came out. When For Those About to Rock first came out, there was a lot of anticipation because again, I was, uh, that was what, a year after Back in Black, right? And uh, I remember we, all of us bought it and we're like, oh, it's great. Kind of similar, but still great, you know, whatever. All these years later, I listened to For Those About to Rock, and I don't think it's that good anymore. Like, I think it's okay, but I think it pales in comparison to Back in Black, for me anyway. But it's like, but it still sounds the same. The production's the same. 
I just don't think the songs are as good as the two albums that came before. But it's still, I think, a good snapshot of ACDC from that era. But as I'll talk about in a minute, I think there's another album that came shortly thereafter that, for me, has stood the test of time. So back to the wild card for Simon. Yeah, OK. Wild card. Z. OK, so um, I He's really like left it right today, right? <laughs> Because I can. That's right. Um, because I, you know, I, I, whilst I'm first going to choose high voltage, um, you know, every everyone's a winner. There's hot chocolate. If you feel like nothing from hot chocolate, everyone's a winner. It's a long, a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. I mean, come on, <laughs> bagpipes. You know it. You know it makes sense, kids. Am I right? Uh, Oh, you're Scottish, yeah. Uh, rock and roll singer. Did you I, like bagpipes? I don't like bagpipes. I'm just being honest. You can barely tell. I'm the Scotsman. Wow. He, he doesn't he do the. Uh, he doesn't do that like <laughs> for seven hours. Before <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> TNT with dynamite. <laughs> with hindsight, can I sit next to you, girl? My might be a bit of a problem, but it's very quality, quality, isn't it? And that's really, really good. She's got balls. Well, there you go. And the title track, it's just, just, just a prime example of 70s uh, boogie and rock. It really, it really, it really is. Uh, and I must have played this recently because the CD is not in, so not in itself. So, yeah. I also listened to it in the car, so it could be anywhere. But I would like to um, say, give a lot of love a lot of love indeed to black ice yeah, that's, that's yeah. A... yes i would um it's too long but rock and roll train sky's on fire big jack hmm. jack this should be jack, jack keeps popping up right yeah anything goes war machine that's just a fantastic opening vibe really it really is um is, it Bren is this the one that brendan o'brien produced springsteen's guy I think it is, isn't it? Uh, anything goes. Actually, sounds a bit like Springsteen at the start. It really does. Um, yeah, it's a little bit too black and too. Wheels. Wheels is excellent. This is this is when ACDC to me went made me go. Oh, they're back, right? We all said that they're yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, a lot, and I really, I've I've got a lot of time. For this. I also quite like Rocker Bust, but for uh, um, Rocker. When, when I had a proper job, we used to uh, be able to teach uh, media theory by the mediums of using certain groups. And one year I thought, fuck it. This is just before I lost my job. Fuck it. I'm going to teach ACDC. <laughs> Imagine trying to explain to the kids why the drummer wasn't in the videos. Yeah, just saying yeah, so um, uh, Black Ice, really, we're back. And I think everything since, oh, yeah, it's not, oh, what's, yeah. not there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where, where, where is it? Why has he gone bold on tour? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he, must, he must have been really upset. And I'd also really like to give a big thumbs up to ACDC Live, which is just a great, greatest hits. Uh, yeah. So it, yeah. See, even got um, your favorite song on. You shook me all night long. It's a real winner. Uh, yeah. Just... So, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. So I think ACDC is one of the only, maybe there might be a couple others, one of the only big, big mega bands who, to my knowledge, have never released like a greatest hits compilation. Right? They have not, have they? Other than that live album, which is basically it. There well, are compilations out there, but whether yeah. they're really part of the catalogue or not is another thing. Like official compilation, like official, yeah. like I don't, I don't think they have. Right, I don't think so. Yeah, there's no way that Iron Man Two wasn't the greatest hits album, though, was it really? Yeah, no, but it doesn't. It's it doesn't, doesn't use the words greatest and yeah, right. you're absolutely like right, the essential or greatest hits or something like that, right? They yeah. don't have anything like that. It depends how, how you define hits as well, doesn't it? Because when it would fit. It was certainly yeah, best of, best of, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that live album, that first live album, is it? That's that's what you need. If if you or don't want to dive into the catalog and you want all of their most known songs, you buy that, and it's you know you you're golden. Yeah, yeah. 
they're best known, they're, for a long period, they're best known over here for being one of the most popular bands that never had a top 10 single, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, here too. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so, in many ways, the wild card kind of answered some questions that I raised to myself along the way. And the reason for that is the, the, for the wild card, what I try to do, what I like to do, because it's one of the things I like about following a band, is discovering the deep cuts. Where are the songs that they threw away that actually you listen to now and you go, oh, wow, you know, they, they, they're really good. Things like Def Leppard's Retroactive, that, that's a better album than some of the albums they've put out. Some of Y&T's more recent collections where they bring together rarities, you think, wow, there's four or five songs here that are just outstandingly good. There's nothing in the ACDC's catalog. They don't have that. It would appear from the outside looking in, and experts are, will be happy to correct me, there's no extras, there's no bonuses, there's very few bespoke B-sides. There are hardly any of those little things that you think, oh, wow, okay, how did that get away? Why didn't they? This catalogue doesn't have these kind of releases. There are great things, like Plug Me In. Okay, so this is lots of live clips and things from throughout the years on DVD as it was back then. This is really, really good. It's an interesting journey. It's quality, actually. I really like it. But it's not my wild card. I've ended up going for a song, one song from a wild card. I mean, it's an EP. It's the only EP in the whole catalogue, as far as I can tell. And it's even misnamed. Oh, yeah. It's called 74 Deal Break. Now, okay, four of these songs are from 74 because they're from the Australian release of High Voltage. There's the anomaly. Early on ACDC, if you look at the first four or five albums, it's very confused. There's an Australian version, there's an international version. There's an Australian-American version, there's an international version. There's all these little kind of differences between the two, like they came out roughly at the same time, they've got different covers. There are different covers from some of the international versions, even against other international versions. High Voltage has got three different covers, depending on which release you look at and where it came out and when it came out. And there are some songs that got left behind. And Jailbreak was initially on the Australian version, I believe, of Dirty Deeds. So it was recorded and set or released in 76. And I mean, the cover, and it's a shame I don't have it anymore, my brother had it, uh, is the same shot that was used for the Nervous Shakedown single. So there's not even a great deal of thought involved in this. This is really just kind of, you know, well, they're hot. <laughs> People outside of Australia probably haven't heard these songs. I mean, the original High Voltage has still never been released, I believe, outside of Australia. It's still remarkably difficult and expensive to find. I mean, it's a headline act and have been for decades, and you still have to go hunting for all these various things. But the song Jailbreak is outstanding. It's absolutely brilliant, and I love it. It's going to be a jailbreak. It's got all that threat. It's got all that kind of aggression in there but it's they never are just snarling and biting at you it's always just oh watch myself do you know what I mean? it's it's that kind of feel what oh, ecd said about you better be careful and that's the way that these songs come across and one of my mates was a massive acdc fan when i was young and it was really all with a bit of alice cooper to be fair it was all he would listen to if you went to paul's house <laughs> you knew what you're going to hear and his version of Jailbreak was obviously on vinyl back in the day, and it had audible pops and crackles after that song. It opens the EP, because all we did was we played that song, and we lifted the needle, and we put it back, and we played right. that song again. And we did it for afternoons. We would just, the whole afternoon. And the drum breaks, this is an exercise in how to make a song without having to, as I say, there's no bells and whistles. The drum breaks are... It's but everything there is there for a reason, and I adore that song. And I played it umpteen times again this week. I found myself doing the same thing, listening to it and going, "My other four songs are okay. Let's listen to Jailbreak again." <laughs> <laughs> and it's so good. And that's my wild card. It is this EP because we do we, we go around releases and various things, but really it's the song Jailbreak is my wild card. Love it to bits and always will. <clears throat> it's a good choice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the wild card for this was kind of tough. I, I thought of many different directions to go into. I was like, all right, do I want to dip like really early in the catalog? I think pretty highly of all those albums. So I was like, eh, let me not do that. 
uh, the '90s and the early 2000, you know, the '90s specifically. I was like, eh, that that that's the bottom half of the catalog for me. I really feel strongly about the last three albums. I enjoy the last three albums quite a bit. And I was like, eh, I don't know if I wanted to do that either. So what I did was uh, I ultimately picked an album that I think when it was first released, I think Stephen hit on it a little bit ago. This was like deemed by many as the beginning of the slide for them a little bit. But I think, you know, this album got kind of ignored back in the day. I think time has been a little pretty kind to it. Because I know for myself personally, when I go back and listen to Flick of the Switch, um, this is actually pretty good. And I'll be honest with you, I enjoy this more than I enjoy for those about to rock these days. Okay. Strange. I know, right? Because I, I would have never said that 30, 40 years ago. But now I listen to Houses on Fire, the title track, Nervous Shakedown, Landslide, Rising Power. I'm like, and granted, Badlands is a great song. You know, this the band produced themselves here. They wanted to break away from Mutt Lang. So this does not sound like the three albums that came before at all. And maybe that's what I think pissed off some fans back in the day, because it's not this big, ballsy stadium rock ACDC anymore. Quite frankly, this stuff sounds more like the early albums to me with Brian Johnson on vocals. And I think that, uh, and I'm guilty as anybody of ignoring this album back in the day. I listen to this now and I'm like, I really like this a lot. And I think to me, Flick of the Switch is like fresh here in, you know, the 2000s because I was basically like back in the day, I was like, eh, I've moved on to other things. Fuck ACDC, I, you know, whatever. This is, and, and that's exactly what I did back then. Now I'm like, this is really good. It's pretty rocking, right? It's fairly heavy. Uh, I always thought that cover art was kind of interesting and kind of cool, you know? And, uh, and then if you get the little reissue here did you pack there's a great shot of them playing right there but uh yeah i don't know so that, again I, ha I had a lot of ways i was going to go i almost did the exact same thing as i almost picked black ice as well i almost picked the new album the one new most recent album but i was like you know what i'm going to go back to this one because this is the one i kind of have been reaching for a lot in recent years when i do want to listen to acdc and uh yeah could have picked the there, there was a couple really great live albums right um but yeah flick of the switch is it for me it's interesting with the, the latter day stuff, the, the, the three most recent albums. There's a theme when we do these shows about the kind of heritage acts. And I mean, there have been some that buck the trend. I had made maybe an hour eyes buck the trend. Where, and maybe maybe not even for all three of us, where that resurgence happens to come in again. Do you know? And suddenly they start to get better again. With ACDC, I, I, I do feel it. It's, the albums are better. But when I compare kind of Latter Day Uriah Heap or Latter Day Deep Purple to Latter Day ACDC, they come off second best or third best out of those three, and I could go on. Do you know? And I would I'm, I would agree with you. I, uh, I, 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 but I would you say that the last three ACDC albums are leagues better than the stuff they did in the nineties? I would. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I I really have. I didn't choose them. I very love for Stiff Upper Lip or Ball Breaker. Really don't like those albums very much at all. I don't dislike them at all. Right. But I don't like them much at all. I put them on and I think indifference a good a good way to describe it. I'm indifferent yeah. to those albums. I'm like, yeah, they're they're okay. Yeah. I never yeah. listen to them. At never. least with Stiff Upper Lip, they did kind of try to pull away again from the the big stadium riff. As a more nuanced album, it, it, it does feel like they're trying to go. You know, we used to do this kind of stuff when we, when we started. Could we do it again? The answer was, in my humble opinion, not really with Brian at that stage of his career. Is is maybe the honest answer? Does the Bond stuff really well live? Certainly did when I saw them. Um, I like the last three albums. I'm drawn to them in the same way that I'm drawn to other heritage acts, more recent stuff. Not really. Someone, interestingly, I think when we did an end of year show a couple of years ago, Peter said, I, I, had not, I didn't mention, you mentioned Power Up. And I, went, I haven't heard it yet. And somebody in the comment, and quite rightly so, said, how can he judge these albums if he hasn't heard that? Well, I've heard it since. Yeah, it's all right. And, and that to me is, is they're still, they're okay. I prefer them. They're better okay. They're okay. 
but that's that's just me. That's yeah. just me. Well, back in black, and you know, those, it's it's not yeah, the, the standard's stupidly high. Yeah. So can you always maintain that? Of course you can. No band can. No. I think you know ACDC is um, for a band that's been around as long as they have an album like Power Up and Black Ice and and whatnot is. Should we expect better than that at this stage of the game? Or is that like pretty damn good for a bunch of guys in their late 60s or early 70s, whatever? You know? Hard, hard to say because there are lots of acts that age that are in- Right. Like, and, and, you know, in saying that, like, so we have gushed on and on about the more recent Saxon albums. Yep. We just, you just mentioned Uriah Heap, right? You've mentioned bands that are older than these guys. Yep. Um, well, not Saxon, but- and quite frankly, I feel those albums are stronger, but I know plenty of bands who have been around for 30, 40, 50 years who are putting out shit that's way worse than ACDC's last couple of albums. Right? Yeah, yes. yeah, okay. Right? So, yeah. It, so, but are they in the middle of the pack there in that whole discussion? Perhaps. Yeah, do, do you know, actually, to be fair, okay, maybe a better way of putting it is they're not letting themselves down anymore. No, they're not. They're not embarrassing they're themselves. Of, no. yeah, yeah, they were, yeah. they were possibly letting themselves down and what I meant to say with the wild card never quite really got round to is that if there's nothing in the vaults and at this stage of their career you would have to suggest there maybe isn't because somebody somewhere would have gone there's a lot of that to be made if we can release 10, 15, 20 rarities do you know Yeah. then that means that the other songs on blow up your video and all that that was, that was the best they had at that point so yeah that's a massive step back up from there, in my opinion. So yeah, maybe being a bit harsh. Yeah, I'm not drawn to these albums. So that's maybe just the best way to put it. I'm yeah, not... and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, cool. Well, there you have it, everybody. Our favorite, least favorite uh, ACDC albums, as long as as well as a wild card. So uh, down below in the comments, let us know your two favorites, your two least favorites, and the album you would consider a wild card. Right. So. Uh, We'll be doing other bands like this in the near future. So stay tuned for that. So thanks for watching everybody and uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together. All the damn time. <laughs> oh, the gusto. Give it some gusto, Simon. Come on, Peter, do that again. Make, make, make him do that properly. We're on Facebook. We're on, oh, yes. We're on Facebook. We're on, yeah, that's right. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. Quite a lot. Quite a lot. <laughs> Some of the time. Most yeah. days. Every most, single day. <laughs> yeah. Without fail. Yeah. It's getting late. Yeah. It's getting late in Lancashire. Yeah. So well, quite past eight. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Simon's been sitting there going, well, that guy in Scotland never shut up. <laughs> At least the lights haven't gone out this week. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next Saturday on the UK Connection. For Stephen Reed and Simon Bray, I am Pete Pardo. Have a good rest of the weekend. See you real soon. Bye-bye.